Thank you, God, for all your goodness in Christ Jesus. May we continue to see Jesus is the Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me go here. We've been dealing with First Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter. Oh. in the world? Okay. So we're going to start. Now, we were dealing with the resurrection, right? Right. Yes. So, we're going to start with 12. Joseph, can you read 12? Okay. Now, if Christ be preached, oh, shoot, there it goes, right? Okay. Okay, okay, Christ be preached that he rose from the dead. I'll say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain and your faith also is in vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ from whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if you be not raised, your faith is in vain. Yet, and yet ye are yet in your sins. Then also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In this life only, we have hope in Christ. We are all of men most miserable. But now if Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that, that slept, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit at the words they that are Christ at his coming then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God even the father when he shall put down all rule and, and all authority and all power for he must reign till he put all enemies under his feet the last enemy shall be destroyed is death for he had put all things under his feet, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do? which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise, not at all. Why are then they baptized for death? And why stand ye, we, in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. 
if after the manner of man I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it be if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Okay. So I want to, this is what I want to talk about tonight. Um, I'm going to go to another scripture. Candy, can you, can you read this? 10 to 12. I mean, 1 to 12. Yeah. Wait. Let me make it. Wait. A fifth, Philippians 3 1. You right? Yeah. Okay. Further, <clears throat> further, my brother and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evil doers, those man manipulators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, <laughs> we who by His Spirit who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks that, if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews in regards to the law. Let's see. As for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gained for me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the res resurrection from the dead. Now that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which, for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Keep reading. All of us who are, <clears throat> all of us who have been who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that to God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For, I, for as I have often told you before, and I'll tell you, Again, even with tears, many live, many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that we may so that we will be like his glorious body. Okay. The reason why I actually read that, and Mama Maria, I'm gonna give you a scripture too. Because before we can we are not gonna understand. We're not gonna understand. Um, the lesson tonight. So let me give 
want you to go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Can you read Romans eight? Okay, eight to one from. Oh, it's gonna be a lot, but it's pretty much the whole chapter, but I'll tell you when it's time. Okay. There is therefore no, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness. That the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnally minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit. Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And okay, I think you lost me. You okay. moved the thing too much. Okay. And if Christ be in you, the body dead because of sin, the body is dead because of sin. And if Christ be in you, the body, oh, okay. But the spirit is life because of the righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Okay. Keep Heirs in Christ. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For mm -hmm. you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. May be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in, in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifest, manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had suspect subject the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaned and travailed in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he hope yet for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for 
as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knows, knoweth that is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate it to be conformed to the image, image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. Before I would like for you to read Romans 5. We'll start with 12. Me? Court. Oh, okay. Can we say Romans 5, 12? Mm-hmm. 12. Oh. Yeah. And then 12, 6. Up to, to the end? Yeah, all the way down then 6, 1 through um, 6. 6, okay. 1 through 5. Okay. <laughs> Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered, entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which is by one man jesus christ has abounded unto many and not as it was by one that sinned so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by, one, uh, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned, unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, now, what shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? But don't you know that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Keep reading, Corey. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should no longer serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin 
but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. And those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. Okay. And I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 5. I'm going to start with 13. It says, It says, for whether we beseed ourselves, we be sit beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober is for your case. For the love of Christ constrains us because we judge. If one died for all, we are all dead. Then, then that he died for all, that they which live shall no hence, henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, Wait a minute. The, am I right? Wherefore, his force know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we know Christ after the flesh, yet now his for we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things are, are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. To it, God was in Christ reconciling himself, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their transgression upon them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now we are ambassador for Christ through God, do beseech you by, by us. We pray you in Christ's state, be ye reconciled to God. For he made him to be being for us who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Now, you guys ask me, why did we go to all these scriptures, right? I know why. I know why. <laughs> I cannot see myself. I'm not the only one, right? You guys know why we went to all these scriptures. Yeah, every everybody knows why we went to the screen. We've been we've been talking this up for a while. This is good. Well, uh -oh. the reason why I went to all these scripture, and I'm gonna be honest with you, because we're in First Corinthians the 15th chapter. <laughs> we're talking about First Corinthians 15, and uh, you have to understand, we do not understand the resurrection. I believe many people are ignorant to the resurrection. The reason why they're ignorant to the resurrection is because they're ignorant to the death of Christ. So they're ignorant to the life of Christ. Now, let me explain something. Let me explain something. Jesus, the, when we talk about the cross, we're not talking about, when we talk about the cross, we're talking about Jesus' cross. We know God through Jesus' cross. We are free from sin because of the cross. Can you see what I'm saying? We are free from sin because of the cross. But we are alive to God, not because of the cross, but because of the yes. resurrection. That's right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You have to understand something. We are dead to sin. We're dead to Adam. The word sin means Adam. We're dead to that nature because of Jesus' death. But we are alive to God because of Jesus' resurrection, not ours. Right. Not our resurrection, Jesus' resurrection. Right. So, so this is why I, I'm, 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 because the problem that this is where there is a separation, there is a division because when God separated Adam out of the tree of knowledge, I mean, out of the garden. It's because of this. 
This is the same, you're in the position of Adam. When God separated Adam out, it was because they have eaten from the tree of knowledge because of death. And yeah. death and life cannot be in the same. There has to be a distinguish between death and life. Jesus, I, I said that Jesus had to fulfill the law. The law Jesus fulfilled was not just being just obeying the law. Jesus did not obey the law. He can't. It's impossible for him to obey the law. What he had to do, say that again, Mama Maria. He fulfilled the law of sin and death. He fulfilled the law of sin and death. He became, this is why, and, and it's very important because this is where there are still people that do not believe in the resurrection. They, they, because they have never experienced the resurrection, they do not believe in a finished work that Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. They just don't believe in the finished work. They do not believe in grace. They believe grace is a, is a byproduct of your mishap. I tend, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't believe grace is a byproduct of my mishap. Grace is not subject to my sin. Right. Right. Grace is greater than my sin. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. you, you have to understand, grace is not subject to me. No. Grace is a life. So mm -hmm. the reason why we cannot understand the resurrection is because oh. of death. Uh, I see Jesus as a sacrifice. And if you see sin from the, from, can I be with you? If you see sin from the, from, uh, if you see Jesus' death as, as the result of your sin, then, then you cannot understand the resurrection. Right, right. You won't be able to enjoy the resurrection because you're still seeing sin and you're under the law. You're not under grace. Mm -hmm. Because you're under the law, you cannot see, you cannot see grace. This is why it's it, it very important because this is God has designed two life. There's two life. Either you're going to experience sin and death in Adam or life, or you're going to experience God in Christ. That, that, that's just the truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not the way. The reason why I am saying this is because we were going in 1 Corinthians, I mean, 15 is dealing with the resurrection. You cannot be a witness of Christ if you have never experienced God. You're not a witness of Christ and never touch God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might, you know Christ, but you're not a witness. Okay. Let me, let me go to the scripture. Okay. I'm going to go back to first Corinthians 15. It says this, it says, now if Christ be preached that he, if, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection from the dead? For if there be no resurrection from the dead, then Christ was not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then what? Um, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is also in vain. Mm-hmm. Yea, and we are found false witness, witness because we testify of who? Of God. It did not say we testify of Christ. Because I'm going to go to one more scripture. Fred, can mm -hmm. you help me out? Mm -hmm. I want to go to Romans, the 10th chapter. I, I want to go to Romans 10. Romans 10. Can you read Romans 10, 5 through 12? Fred, Mr. Fred. Miss Bell's raising her hand. Hold on.
I just want to make it up. Uh-huh. Uh, well, yeah. You start with um start with one through twelve, if you don't mind. Okay. Romans 10, 1 through 12. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does the, uh, these things will live by them. But now the righteousness with, that start, is... Start with chapter, uh, verse 1. See it? Okay. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, my heart, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge, since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the uh, accumulation of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Mm -hmm. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend it into heaven. That is to bring Christ uh, uh, down. Or who will descend into the deep. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you say will be what? saved. Can you say that one more time? If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, keep reading. For it is. Okay. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scriptures say, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Keep it. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and rich, richly blesses all who come, I mean, all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay. How then can they call? Uh, okay, just hold on right there. The reason why I want to go there, I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, Fred, I want you to hold on to what you, where you're at, okay? okay? Okay, it says, now if Christ be priest, that he, you know, if yet we are found witness because we testify of God and that and he raised Christ up, and that he raised Christ up, whom he raised not. If so be that the dead rise not. Can I be honest? This is where we have a problem at. Mm -hmm. Many of us knows about the resurrection, but can I be honest, Mama Maria? We don't believe in the resurrection. We know the resurrection, but we have never experienced the resurrection. So we don't believe in the resurrection. The resurrection is not something that can be taught. Mm -hmm. Resurrection is something that we experience. Candy read that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. See, the problem with the resurrection, we see the resurrection as a one-time thing, don't we? That Jesus was mm -hmm. just raised up. Right. I don't. Mm -hmm. I see resurrection as a eternal as a eternal life. I see resurrection as everything of God is in Christ. I see resurrection as the body of Christ. I see resurrection as the church. I see resurrection 
See, I see all those things when God raised Jesus up from the dead, even though it was, it seemed like a one time, it is one time, but because he's eternity, he had to put all of him. Now I can experience everything of God in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. You see, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I have to experience the, I, I, I experience everything of God in a, in a life, in a resurrection. I do not experience everything of God through the law, through what I have done. I experience everything of God through what Jesus has done. Yeah, in your life. To a, thank you, Mama Maria, through a new life. Mm -hmm. See, we do not preach on the resurrection in this manner, we preach on the resurrection that Jesus was raised up and now he's sitting there and that's it. But we still are living in misery. We still are struggling. But one day, one day, I mean, isn't this how we preached? We preach the resurrection from being in Adam. We do not preach the resurrection that we have ever experienced the resurrection. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. So we are not a witness of the resurrection. Because if I, if I have never experienced the resurrection, if I have never experienced God in Christ, my testimony it's going to justify me or condemn me. Mm -hmm. It's either going to just, hey, hey, Corey, uh, or, uh, Corey, you remember what I said Sunday? The double J. The double J? Uh, no, I don't remember. Don't you remember? We bad, about the so. double, remember we talked about the double J. You had a, a, a <laughs> you thought it was something else. I said, God gave us the double J. What's the double J? Joseph, you remember the double J? I, I, I remember talking about it, but I don't remember what we were saying. One of them was okay. just in and double J, double J is this. Either you're going to experience two things in God. It's called the double J. You read it in Romans, the fifth chapter, Corey. There's two things you're going to experience in God. Judgment or justification. Oh, okay. In Adam, you're going to experience a judgment. Right. In Christ, you're going to experience a justification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not because of Adam or Christ, it's because these are two life. In the, if you walk in the life of Adam, God is just is. Right. Mm -hmm. Your life is going to dictate whether you are, if you are preaching in judgment, that means you're under the law. If you're preaching in grace, you're preaching in justification. You're preaching on what Jesus has done. Do you yeah. see? So this is the this is very important because those who have never experienced the resurrection cannot preach in the justification. Mm -hmm. They cannot testify. So here is where Paul was up there saying. He was saying, if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is also in vain. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are found false witness because we testify on God and that he raised Jesus and, and that he, he raised up Christ whom he raised not. If so, be that the dead raise not. For if the dead raise not, for if the dead raise not, then is not Christ risen. Mm -hmm. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sin. You're yeah. still bound to sin. This is just the truth. Mm -hmm. And if that is true, then those there are that have slept or who are um, in Christ are perished because there is no hope. Right. 
if then this life only we have hope. Well, can you read that, Corey? 19? It says, if in this life uh, we only have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now, can I be honest with you, Corey? This is a sad part. This is what most people are preaching. Oh, oh, nothing. What are you, what are you getting, Joseph? Um, I don't know how to put this in words, but you're most people preach, you know, are under they know under that law, right? So, because they don't they don't know the resurrection. So they, they only preach what they can because you know I was watching videos the other day and they just keep preaching, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, because that's all they know. And so it's like it's like bondage. It's nothing but bondage. It's like the back in bondage, because you have not understand the resurrection and you don't understand righteousness. Because I kept thinking you can't live like that. There's no life in that. There is no life. So now they're preaching Christ, but they're preaching in misery. Right. You, 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 you're trying to preach, but it's kind of hard to preach and, and to, to live if you feel like you're walking on eggshells every day. Because you don't believe in the resurrection. Right. You don't, you don't, don't believe in the resurrection. You life. Thank you, Mama Ray. You, that, that's where it is. We don't understand the church. We preach the church from the fact of the Old Testament, everything. We're, we don't understand the New Testament. You, do you see what I'm saying? We don't understand we have a New Testament. That's why Paul wrote, he says, you know, we do not know Christ after the flesh no more. We do not know no one after the flesh no more. This is a New Testament. This is a New Testament. So the problem is, if I do not believe in the resurrection, I'm still living under the Old Testament. Right. Under the law, yeah. I'm living under the law. Mm -hmm. let's, let's see. Because it says, in, if in this life we have hope, we have hope in Christ. We are most men, most men. Isn't that how people look at us? Mm -hmm. They think that we are in sin. Mm -hmm. Because they do not believe in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Right. Now, would we not, if, if, if there was no resurrection, Corey, would I not be a false prophet? Yeah, absolutely. We all we all would be. Well, I, okay, Mama Maria. Yes. You ready for this? If there was no resurrection, will I not be a cult leader? A what? A cult leader. Oh yeah, yeah. Because there is, you were not uh, basing your truth on anything. You know, if we, if there was not a resurrection. Uh -huh. You go ahead. Go ahead. We don't have new life. We are so, still so the same. I will be because I'm preaching on something that doesn't that you, you I, that you you're right. You're right, Mama Ridge. You're going. You, if if this rest, if there was no resurrection, I will be considered false. Correct. Yes. Right, and, well, you, and nothing would make sense anyway. Because it don't. And be honest, Mama Ridge, it don't even make sense. To the natural mind. Right, because we wouldn't be able to feel any any difference in our spirits. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And that's where we feel the resurrection, where we know the resurrection is in our spirits. Our spirit is a different um, nature now. So, Mama Maria, can you read 20? Because that's but what now, you're but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Oh my goodness. 
Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. did you see why why I was going there, Corey? Because if you are under the, if you believe in judgment, you're going to judge me and you're going to condemn me to death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But can I tell you something, Candy? When people condemn me to death, yeah. praise God. Mm-hmm. All right, no one quiet. If you condemn me to death, praise God. Mm-hmm. Because you are dead already. You already I'm died. I'm dead already. <laughs> she caught it. I'm dead already. Okay, so nobody, when somebody's condemning you to death, you're like, tell me something I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. You're trying to you bring me under the law. The law has crucified me. Paul says this. For by the law I have died that I might live unto God. Um, Galatians 2.19. See, see, the problem that we have when people try to, we want, we have to understand we got to give up our own righteous. There is no righteous in us. Right, correct. So when someone tries to condemn me, well, the law is just true. Mm -hmm. Apple Mm -hmm. is an apple. Okay, you, you say I'm a sinner. Okay, I'm a sinner. Boom. Tell me something, like you said, tell me something I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right, right. I see. I'm not going to justify myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, but you are not the se- you used to be a sinner. No, 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 no. Catch what I'm saying. Under the law, I'm still am a sinner. Oh, under the law, yes. Remember, remember what they are using to condemn me. The law. The law. law. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, the law is not going to change. It's not that I'm not going to sit there and be free from being a sinner under the law. I'm not. So I'm not going to justify myself. I know, but you are not under the law anymore. But you got to catch this. Yes. If a person uses the law against me, Mm -hmm. it's still going to make me a sinner. They're under the law. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So they're trying to, what they want me to do is try to justify my, this is one of the things you got to be very careful about because you know this, you know you're not under the law. But the first thing you would want to do is defend yourself. Yep. That takes you out of Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I accept the truth. Mm-hmm. If you're judging me under the law, right? I'm, I'm not found yeah. guilty. Yeah. Right, well, yes. I- Okay, so I'm just going to accept it. I've been found guilty. Because yeah, the law right, is true. Because right. the law is true. I'm not going to fight the law. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. Satan, well, Satan is called they the accuser of the brother. For yes. mm-hmm. You have to understand the spirit, the spirit behind. What they want you to do is try to justify yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can I ask him? So maybe in a roundabout way or actually his natural way for them is they're trying to get me to come off the testimony, right? They're trying, they're to, get trying to get you to come off of the testimony of Christ. They're trying to get you to justify yourself, yeah. to okay. prove yourself. Takes you out of Christ. Takes you oh. out of Christ. But here is the thing. By faith, it's just like this. If someone say, Mama Maria, you're blind. Are you going to sit there and say, no, I'm not? So if somebody says I'm black? Yes. Uh-huh. I don't know if I might, might have to send them. No, but you ain't going to, are you going to sit there and, and argue with them? No, no, no. Are you going to sit there and, and, and have a conversation with them? No, I, okay. I might ask them, why do you say that? Why do you say that? And they say, well, I think you should be black. I think you, okay, boom, God bless you. Let's go. Mm-hmm. See, here is the thing by knowing who you are in Christ. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to fight you because I have a peace in myself. Right. And I'm not going to let your, your judgment because you're under the law. You can't understand this peace I have. I'm under grace. Right. Correct. Correct. You see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. here is the thing. I already know the law has already, I'm already condemned by the law. 
I'm not justified by the law. I'm condemned by the law. You are justified by grace. I'm justified by what Jesus has done by grace. Right. I'm not right. so when you used the law on me, right? Mm -hmm. What you want me to do, this is what many people want because it's the spirit of, of Satan. And you're not living to be justified. I'm not no. living to be justified. I'm and already you, justified. You know you're not. You yourself are not justified. You know that Christ is justified, and that's how come you're justified. That's what <laughs> makes me justified. Okay. It's right. because the law has sentenced me to death. Because mm -hmm. you're the principle of life. They're yeah. going to have the principle of death. I'm not worried about the principle. I'm not going to go on. So when you want to say, well, I'm not a sinner. Okay, here's the thing. What they want to do is say, okay, it's just like that. They want to use things against you mm -hmm. that have done to make you start looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. And they want you to justify yourself. So what, what, what I do, because remember, they cannot see the resurrection. They're seeing Christ through a law, through the Bible. Mm -hmm. right. they, that is their righteousness. Right. So what they're going to do, they have to criticize your right and get you to doubt your right. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. And remember when I, so here is the thing. By that, they're going to say, you're not right with God. Yeah. You're not right with God. Okay. Because you believe I'm not right with God, praise God. Do you know what that does when I say praise God? That kills it. What else can you say to me? Well, I can mm -hmm. help you get right. No, brother, that, that's okay. <laughs> well, you can do that. No, that's okay. I'm good. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because what they want you to do is get scared. That's the first step. Okay. They want you to get scared. Now you leave, like Joseph said, you leave the testimony of Christ trying to justify yourself. Because okay. can I be honest with you, why we justify ourselves? We're scared. Okay. We're scared. We got to prove ourselves. Go ahead, Joseph. No, I, I was asking because, I mean, this makes sense because I'll be honest, this is what I deal with on a daily basis. When I go to work, I deal with this all the time. They they want you to be justified some other way. I can't. And like sometimes I'll be honest, I, I really don't know what to do. And then okay. the things I get is the spirit just tells me, just go on about your business. Just because there's nothing you can do to justify. You could not justify yourself before God. So how can you justify you if you can't justify yourself before God? Right. How can you justify yourself before man? Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't come to God and say I did this and I did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if I can't justify with that, then how? What is there even in point in trying to justify man? Before man, but the, but you, you have to understand Satan. Satan is going to use Satan use people. And he used the law as his strength. He's the accuser of the brother. That's right. what he's called. So what he does, he brings accusation to get you to look at yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're that scripture, you that the, the strength is the law so we can get to the flesh. Because the yeah. flesh is subject in subjection to him. Not exactly. And so that's the thing. That's the thing. So that's the reality. Because remember, Satan has the power of death. Okay, like, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but you know how it says in Hebrews 1, 1 and 1, 2, you know, it says, All right. now, 1, 2, he speaks to us by his son. That's Satan right. Opposite. He speaks to us by herself. Exactly. Now you're seeing it. You are absolutely, did you guys see what Joseph just said? No. Did you guys hear what Joseph just said? I didn't hear him. I didn't hear the whole thing. God speak to us through the Son. Correct. Satan speak to us through self or Adam, through the right. flesh. 
Mm -hmm. One is going to produce life. The other one produced death. Mm -hmm. It just, that's the truth. That's why the Bible, I had, remember, who read Romans the eighth chapter? Remember it says, those are in the flesh cannot please God. Correct. You have to understand, Satan speaks to you through the flesh. And he can sound just like Jesus. He sounds just like the Christ. Yeah, but when he even sounds like Christ, we know what he's saying is not right. So we I know. know I know, Mama Maria, 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 Maria. I know. Just say yes. Yes. <laughs> Just say yes. Yes. Because the thing about it, you have to understand, Satan does sound just like Christ because he was that close to Christ. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing about it, he cannot produce life. He's going to produce death, like you were saying. But you have to, but it can, but he is a deceiver. Okay, so he's not really trying to get you to do anything. He's just getting you to look at yourself. He gets you right. to look at right. yourself. That's, what, that's the temptation. That is, you. that is how he tempts you. Right. Accuse you. He accuses you. He accuses you. And he condemns you. He does. God doesn't condemn. All right. Now, there is a truth. God is truth. But right. here is the thing. Satan will not produce life. He cannot show the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He cannot show life. What he will show is you. Right. That's the difference being in Adam and being in Christ. Mm-hmm. You got to understand, it says, in Adam, we was all we, we all died in Adam. Is that what you just read, Corey? For, uh, so, so now Christ, because for since one man came death by the, by, wait a minute, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. This is the truth. See, our testimony is that we have, oh, death has no dominion over us. Corey, you read that in Romans the sixth chapter. We, this is where we get, we get confused with. It says, you have to understand what Jesus has done. We testify on Jesus. We're not testifying on Adam. We're not testifying on self. So when we testify on self, do you know we are testifying on, on Satan? That's right. Okay, so we're not, okay, we're not subject to death. So like, we are like, uh, I don't know how to say this. We're not subject to sin. We're not subject to that, that life of, you know, sin and death. Right. Living, we don't live according to our soul, according to our body, we live according to the spirit. Yes. God has, has produced in the spirit. So when we listen to the spirit, it's gonna, it's it's always going to testify on Jesus. You can't testify on anything else. And so, that room is one with God. And so exactly. the, that's how we're able to stand. So if you were to read 22, Joseph, for as an Adam all died, even so, in Christ, all may alive. What does that mean? Oh. I don't know which one. 22. Oh, let me come here. All right. So, in Adam, all die, even so Christ, all shall be in me alive. What does oh. that mean? In Adam... Did you, I don't know. And Adam, we you said it. You just said it. This is our relationship to God. Yeah, this is how we're okay. We're relating to God either in death or in life, either separated from Him or or with Him. Exactly. The only way we can be with Him is if we're in Christ. Yes. That's the only way we can experience in life. Otherwise, in the other life, in, in the death life, in Adam life, we're all dead. 
and so he's only a judgment because this only that's a the, judgment. That's the, now that you see the double day. Do you see the double day? One, you're going to see the justification. The other one, you're going to see judgment. Judgment. Oh, that's what you mean by double J. Justification and judgment. It's it's the it's the that's the judgment that we're standing on. This is yeah. the judgment we're standing on. And so now we're in the new life. And that's the thing. Oh, okay. That, that makes sense. So that's the first fruits. So the fruit comes from the spirit. It doesn't come from the flesh. Thank you. So now the resurrection comes from the what? From the spirit. The spirit comes from yes. the resurrection. Okay. The spirit comes from the resurrection. That's fantastic. So we don't produce faithfulness, whatever things. We don't produce that. That's naturally occurring in the body. That's naturally right. occurring in the body. We experience in your spirit. In in the your spirit. spirit. Yes, in the spirit. So what we're That's experiencing is not ourselves. We're experiencing God in Christ. So thank right. God for that. It's not left to us to produce nothing. We just live in that love and the life. And as we live and walk in that life, it's naturally going to produce those things according to his will and not according to our will. Now, this is the rest of Then comes the end. Right, because we have a new spirit and this is the spirit of God in us. Exactly. So it has to act like God, not uh, Adam. It has it to act like, like God. Like God. Yeah. It won't act like Adam. Right, exactly. And this is how we know God. It's through mm -hmm. that spirit. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, sound good. I don't have to talk like a duck and act like a duck. I just let the duck be the duck in the, and the, oh. and the rat. Yeah, you know? exactly. So He's you're gonna, saying that the spirit of the duck will make you a duck? Yes. I don't have to make it. So yeah. would you not say the spirit of God will make us the sons of God? Right, yeah. exactly. The spirit that's in us after, the yeah, spirit that we, yeah. So that comes out of the touching. Now do you see what our witness is? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So by testifying on that spirit, Mama Maria, are we not testifying on the resurrection? Amen. Yes. Yes, we so are. Remember Romans, the, when it says, if we were planted in the likeness of his death, we also be in the likeness of his, of his um, resurrection. Mm -hmm. We walk in a newness of life. Mm -hmm. you see now do you see so he says then come the end when so now Christ will become the end of all things and when he has and when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God even the father when he shall put all things and all rulers and all authorities and power now watch this for he must reign until he had put all things on all the enemies under his feet and what is the last enemy that he put under his feet? Death. Yeah. Death. Death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do you understand this? I'm going to be honest with you. This is a real death. And the Holy Spirit will get you. It says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the okay. fellowship of his suffering. Okay. Being conformed unto his death, it is his death that we experience everything of God, not ours. That's right. Okay, so those that are, can I ask some questions? Those that are, only those in the resurrection can experience his death, right? Only okay. those in the resurrection, because it's a new life. Right, so in our selves separate from God in that other life in the Adam life all we're going to experience is death and it, it's going to go nowhere because it's mm -hmm. it's an individual death it's not it's the death that we've inherited thank you right? it's the death that we inherit from Adam and but in Christ we experience his death all uh, right here we are going to be proven false every time because we're supposed to be proven false because it proves that he is right and that he is our righteousness and that he is right and we're not right and it proves really that God is true, right? And that we are, and that man is liars. 
<laughs> so that puts everybody on the same level, the same playing field, the same everything. So everybody's the same. And it and it will just prove true. And it'll prove that it's him and it's, and it's not us. But it's to the outside world, it looks the very opposite. Because the world can't judge, doesn't have that judgment within them. If they're living that life in the judgment of Adam, all they can see is things from the outward. They can't see the inward. Also, the blessing is being in Christ. Oh, that is. So then Joseph read 27, 28, and 28. <laughs> For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued under him, unto him then shall also and then shall the son also himself be subject under unto him that put all things under him that god may be all in all okay can i ask you a question is all right. that, that oh, all right i'm gonna ask a question how that already happened has it already happened yes yes mm-hmm Yes. What do you think, Candy? Okay, yes. Okay. Hello, little girl. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> you with your great grandmother? Yeah. <laughs> So have Jesus already put everything under him? Mm -hmm. Everything is now subject to him. Amen. Yes. Yes. It has to be that way. Otherwise, he's not the Christ. God didn't accept him. Everything is mm -hmm. under his feet. So when, everything. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you guys a question? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I hope you guys get this one right. Because it's a two-part question. It's a trick question. Uh -huh. So there's two right answers. When was everything subject unto him? From the beginning. Honestly, the way I think, from the beginning. Okay, what, and what else? And then, and then when he was resurrected. Thank you, Mama Maria. Because yes. I said, remember I said it's a two-part question. Oh, that would make him the beginning and the end. The That's what I want to say. It's a two-part question. It was a trick question. Because remember, everything was made was from the beginning, but then Adam sinned. So death was not subject to him. So in the resurrection, he had to reconcile things back to him. But both of you, because you were right. Remember I said it's a two-part question. It was in it because now eternity oh my God. will step back into time. Heaven and earth, and now heaven and earth are one. Are one. Because now you see the manifestation. It happened in heaven, but then you see it manifest here on earth. Because and now it's manifest on earth, and now they're one. It's, but do you see what I'm saying? Because here is where we have to understand. When Jesus said this, when, when Paul was writing this, this is not the beginning. This is no, that was after the resurrection. This is the resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, everything was subject. So, so, so he said, for he had to put all things under him. And he said, all things put under him, and that he had said that which all things. And when he had put all things under, then shall the son himself be subject, that he put all things under, that God may be all in all. That's the church. We know the church was before the foundation of the world. But we also have to see that the church was manifested through the resurrection. The church has nothing to do with the world. No. Mm -hmm. So when it says, what else? Can someone read 29 then? Else, what shall we do 
Else, what shall we do which are? It says, else what shall we do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead raise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Go ahead, read 30 and 31. And why, why do we Did stand in every hour? Is it on the computer on the screen? The what? Did you put that on the screen? What, what, put what on the screen? The scriptures? I didn't put the scriptures. Hold on, let me see what's going on. Oh, no, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead and read. Okay, it says, uh, and why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, uh, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Okay, so does Paul die daily? He reckons himself dead. What are you saying, Mama Marie? Are you on mute? Unmute yourself. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Now, the reason why I say this, remember, I asked you, when did this happen? You and Corey and Joseph, everybody said, it's from the beginning, and it's also mm -hmm. in the resurrection. Right. This is a, this is this is very tricky. Where you at, Mama Marie? Okay. <laughs> okay. This is where the trick is. Remember, eternity. It just is. Because you're correct. Jesus has restored all things back to what God has wanted. All things is subject to him. This is how we know God. All things are subject to him. You agree with that? Yes. Okay. Remember God says, but here is where the problem was. Everything in heaven was subject to him, but was right. everything on earth subject to him? Yes. Yes. No. Well, the kingdom is kingdom is sub, you know no, no, the no. world. Catch, catch, catch what you're saying. Everything in heaven was subject to him in the beginning, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but everything on earth was not, because remember the authority was given to. Him. Oh yes, it was yeah okay yeah. It was given to Adam. Adam. Correct. Now here is the thing. Now God is just is. Mm -hmm. God is just is right, Corey. So God cannot change creation. He cannot. So when he gave the authority to Adam, if Adam was supposed to be Christ on earth. Man was supposed to be Christ on earth. Am I right? Man yes. Man was supposed to be the body of Christ on earth. Mm hmm when man sinned, he became the body of sin. The body of sin and can death. You, can you close the door? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, he became the body of sin and death. So he was no longer the body of Christ, of righteousness and life. He was the body of sin and death. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying? So now the will of God was still Jesus the will of God was still in Christ, but it was not manifested on earth. Right. Because there was no body to manifest. It. Now, I hope you catch what I just said. There was no body to manifest. It. There was no church. So it's a two-way, no body. You're right. right. <laughs> there was no one 
that could manifest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was no body right. that could manifest. Mm -hmm. wow, that sounds a lot like there, there's nobody that could open the seals. No one could open the seal because also there was no body as the, the body, body of Christ, Christ. Yeah. to right. manifest it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause no one was righteous. Correct. So what God has, so God' will was suspended in heaven, but not on earth. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had to come in the likeness of a man. Of a man, yes. Condemn sin in himself, in his own flesh. Mm -hmm. So that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us. Right. See, that's the part of the resurrection. So now there is a new man said, walk in a new man after righteousness and holiness. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? So here is the thing. So when, so how do, this is why it's still, um, some people say it's not, it have not happened. It because for, but um, himself until all things else, what shall we do be baptized? We experience this stuff through baptism. We experience the church through the baptism. We are put into the church by baptism. The Holy Spirit baptism? No. In Christ. No, okay, but uh, but the Holy, I mean, you are not talking about water, right? I'm talking about the water baptism. Right, Corey? Oh, okay. Huh? And I'm not talking about the water baptism. Yeah. But why I'm talking about the water baptism, the water baptism marks the resurrect the death and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit can only come to you. That you can only experience the church through baptism. Okay. Now, I'm probably what you are saying, because you are close. You're so close. I know you're cheating on me, but I want you to cheat on me this time. The Holy Spirit cannot come unto you because the Holy Spirit comes upon Christ. Right. So you have to, the Holy Spirit does not come upon Adam. Right, no. It comes upon Christ. Mm -hmm. Because everything is subject to Christ, I have, mm -hmm. to, I have to be baptized. My baptism is a recognition of my death in Adam and my life in God through Jesus right. Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because now my recognition on that, that's my faith, the Holy Spirit is not, it's not subject to me, it's subject to that life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. So because now this is why he says, this is what I asked Corey. He says, I put doors and rejoice in Christ Jesus. I die daily. We reckon ourselves dead to sin, dead. So now that there is God days, we experience God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. That is the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the power of God. That is the Holy Spirit. Mm hmm. You see what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit now, but here's, this is why I said, now that you understand when I say we don't understand the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is not just raising us up. Right, Corey? Because I know I'm about really quick, Joseph. I'm, I'm about, I got about seven minutes. Kenny, no. Kenny it, you have to it, just it, hold for me for seven minutes. Can you hold for me for seven minutes? Okay, all right. Because I know Candy looked tired. No, you just confused me okay. at the end when you're saying about the... So you're saying if we if I have been baptized in water, then what? If you do not... The baptism is an identity. Do you not identify Jesus in his death and his resurrection? Yes. Jesus says this. Jesus says, Preach the gospel. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. That's the salvation. 
is Christ, is identifying with Christ. The water did not save you. It is the identity of the death. It's the symbol of death and resurrection. Okay. Water, water baptism is reckoning. It's the reckoning. It's 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 taking account. Yes. Right, but, but what about people that have never don't been Don't worry about I, it. I don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Because it's in Christ that we're talking about. We're not just okay. I'm not do not go up under the law. Now do you see what I'm trying to say? We don't go up under the law. Right, right. We are testifying the baptism is nothing but a testimony of your identifying in Christ. Right, right. So we don't have to be. I know you don't have to be, but <laughs> <laughs> you taking me. I don't. Okay. okay, let me explain what I'm trying to I'm say. I'm just making sure because the, I don't. I can. I can what, feel excluded right now if if I. No, 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 no. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't feel excluded because we don't talk. We talk about the in Christ. That is where the baptism. Do you not know many of you were baptized were baptized into Jesus' death? Did not Corey read that? Yeah. Okay. I'm just. Okay. It's no different if someone says, "Should I take on the communion? Should I take the blood? Should I take the communion?" Okay, wait a minute. If you do not reckon the blood um, that the that the um, the juice is not the is is for the blood of Jesus Christ and the bread is the body. All you're doing is just drinking and eating. If you go into the water, right. if you just go into the water and you come back up, that's it. Now, here's the thing why I say you have to be baptized. You've got to reckon yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. You got to. That is salvation. Salvation is not the act, the salvation is the attitude. Correct. Isn't that how we partake of the covenant? Yes. That's the yes. So when I when we talk about baptism, this is where we were talking about the baptism. So are you saying that people don't have to be baptized? When the Bible didn't it say you have to be? <laughs> okay. Let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask you guys. That's why I brought it up because I knew. It would Hello? Am I frozen or? No. Oh, oh, I, mean, I had to step into the break room on this one. Here's the thing. Let me explain something. Baptism, the actual baptism, is an expression. But if you sit there and tell me a person that is baptized, they are saved, that they know the death, the burial, and the resurrection. No, of course that doesn't save them. Christ, they're saved. Let 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 me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Just let me finish. And then I, I'll let you talk, but let me let me finish what I'm trying to say. I have seen people who goes in the water and do not recognize they're in Christ. Jesus said this. This is what the, uh, the scripture says in Romans 6. I had Corey read that. That's why, Corey, now you see why I had you read Romans 6. Uh, yeah. It says, yeah. shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How should we that are dead to sin live any longer? Do you not know that many of us were baptized you were baptized into Christ's death. Mm-hmm. I'm like this. This is just me. The church is built on the resurrection. That's just the truth. What I preach is built on a resurrection. Correct. Being in Christ, the things is based on the resurrection. That's why we had, I said, when was everything subject to Christ? Mm-hmm. Now, Mama Maria said it and Corey said it from the beginning in the resurrection. 
Did you not say that, Mama Marie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The beginning is because of who Jesus is. Correct. In the resurrection, it's because this is how we experience everything. This is on earth. When we are baptized, it's not under the law. It is an acknowledgement. It's no different than a man and a woman getting married. The wedding is the wedding. They have to be already made up in their mind that they're going to be committed to one another far long before the actual ceremony. The mm -hmm. ceremony is for the world to know. Mm -hmm. The ceremony, but if they was not married, if they was not committed to each other before that, that marriage means nothing. If you do not reckon yourself dead to sin and alive to God and reckoning what Jesus has done, the baptism will not save you. Right. That's just a truth. You cannot be baptized to be saved in that sense. You cannot go into the water to be, you have to reckon that Jesus has died for you and now you live unto Christ. What you are saying, what you are saying, you're, you're bringing, now you are wrecking yourself. This is why Paul says, I, uh, I die daily. He takes that he carries the death of Christ everywhere he goes. That's what baptism is. If we do not carry the, bap the death of Christ, we cannot walk. We carry, and I'm going to say this again, we carry the death of Christ, but we walk in the resurrection of Christ. I hope I'm making myself clear. That's been, we identify ourselves in Christ that the old man is dead. We carry that death as to, as we are free from one man, but the walk, we walk in the spirit as in the resurrection as walking in a newness of life. That is a new man. Right. That is baptism. Now, people say, well, should I get baptized? I'm like this. I believe in Mark 16, 16, Jesus says, preach the gospel. He believes and is baptized, shall be saved. But the scripture says, he who do not believe, it did not say he is not baptized, shall be condemned. Our problem that we have is we got to be careful of putting people under the law. I believe the Holy Spirit in us is the spirit that testifies the truth. If the spirit tells you that it's just like speaking in tongues or anything else, the spirit is the one that guides us into all righteous. When we come together, we come, we, I do not come together and ask people, are they baptized or not? Have you guys have ever asked, seen me done that? My question is a solid question. Are you in Christ? Now, I'm going to say this. This is why I'm, I'm saying this. If you're in Christ, everything of God is yours. That's just a truth. If you do not believe yourself in Christ, then the things of God will be suspended to you because everything of God has to come by faith in Jesus Christ. That's baptism. That is the true baptism. Now, like I told Mama Maria, you got, see, the Holy Spirit is subject to the resurrection. But if I were to sit there and say, you better be baptized. What is the condition of that person? I believe the Holy Spirit is, is great enough that it will testify on truth. I know Mark 16, 16, 16, 15. 
and I can go to the scripture. But Jesus is still talking about the resurrection. If you go back to, this is where many people have missed this scripture. It's in Mark 15, 6, I mean, 16, 15. It says, go ye and preach the gospel. Um, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believe not shall be damned. Now, the reason why, but here is the thing. The gospel has to be preached. Do we preach the gospel of being in Christ? If that's the gospel we're preaching, Is everybody identifying being in Christ? Because if we do not believe that, we're deceiving ourselves. Like I said, this is the resurrection. This is a real life. Wasn't this that, what, huh? that, was, that right there, what you just read in Mark, wasn't that written before he was resurrected? No, that was after he was resurrected. Oh, after? That's after he was resurrected. Oh, okay. That was after he was resurrected. That is the testimony. So all we are testifying, we are in the body of Christ. So when we are baptized, we are testifying we are in the body of Christ. That's all baptism is. But if you do not believe you're in the body of Christ, when we come together, we fellowship in Christ. Go ahead, Joseph. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, but if you told somebody they would be, would be, uh, they had to be baptized, then you would be taking them out of Christ. It would be on the wrong testimony. It would show their baptism would be null and void before God, and it would mean nothing. And they would gain, you would gain, nobody would gain because we would still be under sin and death at that point. Because we're, it's, it's not testifying on the right life. So it's going to show. So it, it would be like, it would be probably you, you, you don't focus on that. The, 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 that is because, because what I'm seeing in this, when I'm reading, when I'm hearing this, is that when we do the, uh, when we truly believe and all that stuff that we talk back in Corinthians and stuff. And when we believe in that resurrection and we walk into that resurrection, and if you truly believe and you have truly reckoned that, then that's the baptism. And that's automatically, it's not like it's, it, it will show like a, a duck's going to, you're going to see by the actions of the duck, you're going to see the life of the duck. And it's automatically going to show that it's of Christ or it's not of Christ because it's going to manifest either way. So you don't focus on whether you got, physical arousal because like we said the whole thing that we if i'm right that we've been living in we've been teaching is the whole thing is we don't focus on actions we focus on life because life produces life and the reason why we do that is because you're right joseph you just hit you just hit um i hope you guys understand what joseph was saying we're in christ that which is not of christ it's going to be exposed. That's the truth. If we get caught up in the action, the first thing people want me to do is say, okay, you, are you baptized? I'm not going to ask you, are you baptized? What is the first thing I'm going to ask? Are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? Because when you ask the question, are you in Christ? Are you identifying with Christ? Because here's what happened. Can I tell you what just happened, Candy? Can I, can I be honest with you? Everything I said came true just right now. I mean, mm -hmm. do you know how it came true? When we start talking about the baptism, you start looking at yourself. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you know? The thing is, if we are in Christ, we are completed. We don't need anything else. Right you there. Start, did, you, did you remember when, you, when we started talking about the baptism, 
you start looking at yourself. Okay. Yeah. That's when, remember I told, my, remember my Marie, I said about the justification, we try to defend ourselves. Yeah. It's just natural because right. it, 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 it's, this, is, this is not, I'm not picking on you, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is this is where the danger comes in. Why I, we have to understand we are in Christ. Right. I've had people who, who try to get baptized and the first thing they want to do is say, okay, now you got to get the Holy Ghost. Now you got to speak in tongues. Now you got to do this. Now you got to do this. Okay. But no one talks about being in Christ, about experiencing God in Christ. Now, here's the thing. If God convicts you tonight and says, you need to be baptized, I'm the first one to go and, get and baptize you. But it's going to be God, not me. Jesus says, preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized. He did not say preach the baptism. Right. He said preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. If the Holy Spirit convicts you, I'm with you. But I will not condemn you. Right. And neither will the God condemn her. You, you, you see where I'm going? We see where I'm going? Because now we're, now we're not preaching the gospel again. Right, right. That's, I mean, I, I'm sorry if, the, if, if this is offensive to um, people on Facebook or anything. I will not condemn anybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we are under grace, not under right. law. The reason why I, I, I say that, if a person feel led in being baptized, Question, what was the question you asked me? Do we have to be baptized? And I won't answer that question. Because here is the thing. That's a, I will not, remember, I, that would, if we sit there and say, what is it that God is showing? It's more important than what I, because if not, I will put you up under the law either way. I will put you up on the law to say you have to be baptized, and I'll put you up on the law saying you don't have to be baptized. My question is, are you in Christ? And are you identifying with Christ? Now, everything we're going to talk about is being in Christ. Yeah, that's, that's where, the main thing. That's where now do you see when I said you have to, that's the baptism. It is the resurrection. I'm focused on a resurrection. I'm not focused on an act. I'm going off of what the scripture is saying. And I hope I'm making sense. We cannot experience nothing of God. This is just a truth. Outside of the body of Christ. Do you guys agree with that? Mm-hmm. We're not going to experience something outside of God, outside of the body of Christ. Amen. Yeah. There's only completion. You're going to see completion in the body of Christ. You cannot see com yourself complete outside the body of Christ. Only as part of the body of Christ, you're going to see yourself complete. That's the only place where you're going to be. Oh, whole. baptism is nothing but an identity. Yeah. It's, it's just an identity. I identify myself in Christ. Now, Candy, yeah. can you identify yourself in Christ? Do I? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you at peace? Yeah, I've been at, I was at peace a long time ago, like two, three years ago. Praise the Lord. You know, I, to me, baptism, Pastor Wade, it's like, okay, you get married in church. You are married, but then you are going to have a ceremony. If you don't Maria, have the ceremony, you Maria, are still married. Mama Maria, that's what I just said. <laughs> you said the exact same thing I just said. 
Uh-huh. Yes, it is exactly. Yes. Right, but you said that, uh, you know, in order to get married, you have to affirm that you want to get married. Now, what I'm saying is the only thing that's really important when you get married is is getting married in front of God. The ceremony, people spend $50,000, $100,000. That is not a Red marriage. Exactly the same thing I'm saying. Right, right. And it's the same, the same thing. You're saying the exact same thing. Right. So once we have Christ in us, we have everything. Now, we, if we want to, I don't know, walk on the street and just say, hey, praise the Lord. You know, I mean... I don't care, but that doesn't make me a Christian. What makes me a Christian is that I have I am Christ, in Christ in me. And Christ is in me. Amen. Yeah. I am in Christ, and Christ is in me. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's where, I guess, where I have to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have preached on, I have taught on baptism. I have taught on both being baptized from um, but every time I teach on baptism, being in Christ, it is being delivered from sin. I do not preach. I preach on that baptism. I preach on experiencing everything of God. Amen. In Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because right. otherwise you could be a witness of the resurrection. I cannot. Thank you, Joseph. Amen. You need to hear what I just said. Or I could not be a witness of the resurrection. Because I think sometimes what we do, we want to, we, we get caught up in what a person have done or what a person have not done. Right, right. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask a question. What did Jesus do? Jesus shed his blood for me. Do you believe in that? Amen, I do. Now do we, do we fellowship in that? Amen, yes. Now, I know yes. that, like I said, this. I'm very careful because we've been preaching under grace, not under the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe the Holy Spirit is the thing that those that are led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm, I'm going. Ms. Bell, do you have something? I don't, is she there? Oh, she can, uh, she is uh, mute. Oh. I can't talk right now, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure because I, one of the things I try not to do, we're here to preach Christ. Amen. And it's so hard because, you know, like, like I wasn't going to go into the trap of saying, oh, you don't have to be baptized. Because then someone would say, well, pastor said you don't have to be baptized. And then someone would say, because, or oh, someone said you have to be baptized. And then someone would say, well, pastor said you have to be baptized. I can talk about Jesus. Are you guys leaving? Joseph, you want to close us out? Thank you, God, for all you've given us in Christ Jesus. May we continue to see that Jesus is the Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.